have here so a pump of water distribution system is powered by a 15 kilowatt electric motor whose efficiency is 90% so we have here 15 kilowatt no? so that will be the electrical power so we are I'm gonna write here EP okay so I'm gonna draw here we have here your electric motor so you have your electrical power so EP which is 15 kilowatt so that will be at 90% efficiency and so I'm gonna remove that one so that one so then uh, as shown the uh, uh, ninety percent efficiency as shown in figure so uh, this one so we have your electric motor then you have your pump here okay. then the water flow rate through the pump is we have the volume flow rate which is fifty liters so the we have so we have the flow we have your volume flow rate not from a passive liter so you have your Q which is fifty liters per second okay. the diameter of the inlet of the pipes are the same so the inlet so the diameter are the inlet so you have the same inlet and outlet so assuming that one so inlet so which is this one okay. so the same also the value here so the diameter of your assuming me and the problem so diameter of the inlet is equal to the diameter okay. this is the diameter at the outlet so the, uh, the following condition that is being specified then the water flow rate uh, okay so the elevation and difference across the pump is negligible so it's negligible since we have here in the discharge is malit lang naman so it is already being neglected so if the absolute pressure at the inlet and the outlet pump are measured to be 100, 2, and 300. So we have the pressure gauge reading dito. So this is your pressure one, which is 100 kPa. And we have the discharge pressure. Uh, so we already from here. So we have the discharge pressure here, which is um, 300 kPa reading by pressure gauge now uh, determine the mechanical efficiency of the pump and the temperature rise of water so as it flows through the pump due to the mechanical inefficiency so we need to determine now the how much is being okay, we need to set up the efficiency of the pump so we have so we have for the efficiency of the motor <coughs> efficiency of the motor so it will be equal to the work of the shaft so work of the shaft so we have here your shafting okay. then it is divided by the uh, EP or the electrical work so I'm going to write here EP na lang. So we can get the the, <coughs> the values for the work of the shop. So since the motor efficiency is 90%, so work of the shop okay, is now equal to the motor efficiency times your electrical power. So we have the work of the shop is equal to the motor efficiency which is your combined since it is 90 percent and your ep electrical power is 15 kilowatt so we have the value for the work of the shop is equal to um, 13.5 kilowatt so that is the work of the shop so this one due to inefficiency so by means of your friction now for the pump so we need to get the pump efficiency here now we need to find uh, e loss oh, 
So we have the equation for your uh, loss. So that would be E loss. So that will be E loss is equal to work of the shaft minus work of the pump or let's say water horsepower. So we need to find um, the water horsepower and so let's try using the total dynamic head equation to find the work of the pump. Now let's express the total dynamic or we know that from our derivation uh, previously the total dynamic head or the total dynamic head is equal to equal to the water uh, water horse um, water horse power divided by the weight flow rate so we have the change elevation so i'm going to rewrite this also phrase so i'm just going to copy it uh, so that and our head loss so that would be the heat friction divided by your weight flow rate okay so looking at the um, uh, the, uh, the figure of the pump. So and also uh, uh, the problems also state that the elevation difference across the pump is negligible. So we have the difference across uh, elevation difference. So it is disregarded. But usually we have the elevation from here to here. But since the problem states that it is disregarded, so so I'm going to uh, crush this one as a zero so it will be removed now also the problem states that so we have an elevation difference across the pump is negligible and the diameter of the inlet and outlet of the pipes are the same okay, so it means that we have the same velocity here so if we have the same diameter so take note of that one if you have the same diameter you will always have the same velocity so I'm going to cancel now your velocity here so this one will be zero so there is no change so uh, the absolute pressure so the inlet and the outlet okay so this is good enough so let's rewrite our, rewrite our equation since we need to work out with the water horsepower here um, so I'm gonna multiply ito now since the head loss were not given also to the problem so um, we are going to assume this one is already zero so I'm going to crush that one here as well okay. so my E1 along natin is um, water horsepower this is equal now to the weight flow rate times the pressure 2 minus your pressure 1 divided by the density and gravity okay so let's expand the specific weight so that will be so we have here the specific uh, weight flow rate that will be the specific weight uh, times with the volume flow rate then we have the change in pressure one and pressure uh, pressure change in pressure then we have the density times the gravity we can further ex uh, expand this equation where our specific weight is equal to the um, mass flow rate over the volume for this uh, so it will be mass flow rate then we have your volume flow rate okay, then also we have your volume flow rate here and multiply by the pressure to Pressure one we have the density times the gravity. This way is in density times the gravity. Density times I sorry, this is density times the so this is all the density times the volume of the so pressure two and pressure one. Density times the gravity is also not not um, specific
specific way so let's check let's check the units so um bullet for right nothing that will be cubic meter per second then it will be multiplied to newton per square meter then we have the g gravity that is meter per second squared so then i mean yung units yeah I want to correct this one. So we have here, uh, so the specific weight, so that is the ratio of the weight of the fluid. It's the ratio of the weight divided by the uh, volume director. I'm uh, gonna cancel this one. Okay. Cancel this one and this one. So we have now the W. I'm gonna change this one. weight now our weight is expressed in terms of mass it will be expressed in terms of mass times the gravity so, okay, this one then I'm gonna rewrite this one into your density times the gravity so we have your common here your gravity so it becomes a okay. now we have what is left is density okay where your density is the ratio of mass over the volume okay so let's try to rewrite that one so we have here so that will be mass must be mass this is already mass to rate no? okay. mass to rate device is equal to the pressure 2 minus your pressure 1 now it is now the ratio density is the ratio of mass over the volume so it will be mass over, over the volume oh so I'm gonna change this one to volume to rate okay now try to reverse this one so cancel na natin itong mass to rate what is left is the volume pressure and the bus natin yan we have now the water power is equal to q volume flow rate times the pressure to minus your pressure one so let's substitute yung value we have the volume flow rate is 50 liters per second 50 liters per second now let's go then we have wait we have your pressure which is already given so we need to convert this one so one cubic meter we have 1000 1000 liters then our pressure to that is 300 now 300 kPa so I'm gonna express that one to 300 300,000 newton per square meter minus um, 100 kPa so that will be 100,000 newton per square meter okay, so, so it will be cancelled out this one will be cancelled out okay. this one. Mm -hmm. now what is left is cubic meter so um minus something to it will be deducted so this one is removed and this one cancel and cancel so our unit now is newton meter second so that is already equal to watts so we have the water power is equal to so we have 10,000 newton meter second or let's say this is 10 kilowatt so let's uh, so from the e-loss so let's substitute the value which is your value of the work of the shaft which is equal to 13.50 13.5 kilowatt so substituting that one it will be 13.5 kilowatt minus the value will 10 kilowatt 
so we have the value of three point five kilowatt. So we have the heat that that is the heat that is being rejected to the system. Heat rejected. by the system okay. now let's compute about the change in temperature so for the change in temperature we have the equation E loss is equal to your mass flow rate uh, then times the change in enthalpy from point 2 to point 1 which is equal to your m c delta t okay. so the, the rise in temperature the change in temperature is now equal to e loss divided by the mass flow rate times so the specific heat so we have the E loss which is 3.5 kilowatt. Then for the mass flow rate, since we don't have the value, we need to compute the mass flow rate. So in order to do that, so where our mass flow rate, so that will be so our mass flow rate is equal to density times the volume flow rate okay, where the density is 1000 kg per set so this is the density is 1000 kg per cubic meter then multiply by the volume flow rate which is 50 liter per second okay then I'm going to convert that 1 cubic meter is equal to 1000 liters so we have the value for the mass flow rate is equal to so we have the value of 50 kilogram per second so substituting that one here so we have 50 kilogram per second then multiply the specific heat so we have the specific heat um, and the specific the specific heat of water is equal to 4.18 okay so this is will be kilojoule per kilogram degree celsius so we have now the rise in temperature is equal to 3.5 divided by 50 times 4.18 so we have 0 0.017 degree celsius this goes up in common population here so cancel cancel so this is already in terms of kilojoule how is this really but it's kilojoule per second so cancel out cancel out so in seconds cancel out it's already cancel out so what we have left is degree celsius so we have the rise in temperature the change in temperature which is equal to 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.017 degrees so napakalit lang siya okay. anyway so that's it so looking at the no, review of the solution okay, so we start here uh, the motor efficiency we, that is the ratio of the work of the shop then integral power so we get the work of the shop then we have the equation for the uh, loss so that will be the work of the shop minus the work of the pump then uh natin yung ano nya water horsepower by means of the total dynamic head so kanina we're using the um steady flow energy equation okay so where also the total dynamic is being derived from the steady flow energy equation so 
um, substituting natin yung value and also eliminating yung mga, da, di, mga dapat i-disregard sa equation. Then, we find a live arrive the same equation to using the steady flow in the equation or this is the for the work of the pump so this is the work of one new pump or that of no water horsepower no. so we have the value here substitute natin sa ila so makukuha natin the value is 3.5 kilowatt now using the heat loss so using the uh, mass flow rate times or the change in turn energy so we have the mc delta t okay so using the specific uh, so the specific heat of the waters will be given so substituting the body we arrive at the change in temperature of 0 0.077 degrees Celsius. 